Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to another one of Nathan's commentary videos. Uh, and today, Nate wants to talk about the right to protest. Yeah, well, I'll give you my reasoning on why we have the right to protest. Um, it might be a bit different to some people's reasoning. Um, but my reasoning is, you know, uh, we, we, we are a democracy and we have come, and, you know, the world has fought hard for democracy. And the idea of democracy, in my mind, is that the population of a country should have choice and say in who their government is. That's compared to regimes that come in and claim control of people and dominate people and assert themselves onto populations, whether that's religious regimes or fascist regimes or communist regimes, but regimes that assert dominance and take away choice like monarchies, uh, kings and queens and such, where, where the decisions of the country are decided by um, an elite group of people who dictate to everybody else what they're going to do. That's the opposite of choice. But we, in the West, we live in democracy, and the idea is supposed to be that people in the community, and the, and the community is the whole country of Australia, so everyone in the community is entitled to equal share in, in, in equal share in a say in how the country is run. So we have the right, so, so we vote for our leaders. So we have the right to choose what ideology, ideology we believe uh, and, and we have the right to choose what our views are. So that's to say that we believe that the government doesn't tell us what to think and doesn't tell us what our views are. We, the public, the people, we decide what our individual views are and collectively what the collective view of our society is through voting. Now, how that comes to the right to protest is it said, you know, by saying that we have choice to choose who our leaders are and therefore to choose our political persuasions and our ideology, we're saying that we have the right to disagree with each other. So that is to say we can disagree with each other and we can disagree with what the state's doing, right? So that's why we have the right to choice, which is the primary principle of principle of democracy is choice. So we have the right to disagree with each other's positions and therefore, to some extent, we have the right to argue and that arguing with each other can be interpreted as protest. So we have the right to protest against ideas that we disagree with because we have the right to have our own individual ideas and we have a right to, to openly disagree with others and this is displayed through the action of voting where two individuals might vote for two different parties, it's an act of protest against each other to vote in opposite directions. They are protesting against each other in some way. So that's kind of how I see it. Um, so, and, and the other way you can see the right to protest, that understanding of the right to protest is more about um, you having an individual right to express yourself and to be yourself and to express your views. And the other aspect of the right to protest is an individual might feel they have an absolute urgent responsibility to protest, and that's a whole other discussion. Now, climate activists would feel um, that they have an urgent responsibility to protest because they feel they are saving the world from destruction. So, so they will disregard um, expectations of the state and of the rest of the community uh, in the name of their cause because they feel that their cause is of such importance to uh, the rest of humanity that it overrides um, the views of others. So they come in and they protest because they feel they have a responsibility um, to do what is right. So, so there's having a right to protest, and I spoke about this in my video about conformity. This is the first video I did. This is a bit of a reiteration of that. But there's the right to protest. That, that's like to say, I, I'm a cannabis smoker, as I said in the conformity video. I'm a cannabis smoker. I want to smoke cannabis. I'm being told that I'm not allowed to. So it's my right to say, no, I disagree. Why can't I? It's my personal liberty. It's my choice. So I have a right to disagree. And that's different to having an urgent responsibility to save the planet from destruction. Uh, and that's a responsibility to protest. Um, but I've been talking to my support worker, Alan, a bit about what the law says about protest. Um, and I've known for a while that the laws in Australia are quite strict. You know, in some states you have to apply for a permit 
uh, to protest, and I don't think it's always been that way. But Alan was explaining to me, what was Alan explaining to me? He was explaining to me that with regards to political discussion, which is, you know, we protest each other by disagreeing with each other's position, so we debate and we discuss and we can protest each other in discussion. We have the right to oppose each other. We're not forced to agree. Um, so uh, Alan was saying that the High Court reasoned that um, because we live in a nation where we uh, vote, we needed the ability to discuss the issues um, in order to form an informed opinion so that we could vote. So we have the f right, the implied right to political communication and discussion. Now, I see that as protest, as I said, um, because we have the right to challenge each other and to disagree with each other's perspective and we have the right to take sides. And the action, in my mind, the action of taking sides itself is a protest against the other side by saying I'm going to vote uh, for the Greens, I am protesting that action of voting for the Greens is a rebellion, a protest against the other parties. Um, so that's what Alan explains to me, that the High Court said that we have an implied right to political communication. Um, so, and, and the High Court, Alan also explains to me, has explained that the view of the High Court is that we have a right to agitate. Uh, so that is to say that we have a right to take action um, whether that's um, going out on the harbour in yachts, in, in, in um, boats and blocking the coal ships. Now, the Australian government doesn't agree that we... It would seem that we have the right to that sort of agitation, but there have been cases in the past where people have agitated, and there was one case Alan was taking me through. I can't remember the details of it, but the ruling at the end of the case, Alan explains to me, the ruling of the High Court was that the individual involved who had agitated had the legal right to agitate. So I think there's a lot of question in this country and a lot of disagreeing views about whether we have the right to protest and what level of protest is acceptable. Um, I think Australia is one of the countries that's a bit more strict on people's right to protest. But for the reasons I've explained at the start of the video, I very much see the right to protest as central to the democratic process, right? And it's like the system of democracy is designed to regulate itself of, of corruption and poor decision making through voting um, so and through the right to protest. So that is to say, if we see the government doing the wrong thing, and we know the government is doing the wrong thing, the government is the authority. We're not authorities necessarily. We don't necessarily have any status of formal authority, but we are individuals who see wrong being done by the state, so we have the right to self-regulate the system, to regulate the state through our action of protest. So it's about society self-regulating itself. So I do think the right to protest is central to democracy, and I think it's important that we maintain the right to protest. And I don't think Australia has a healthy respect for the importance of protest action for driving positive change in the world. So drop a comment in the comment section about what you think about the right to protest and whether you think people should be able to protest or whether you're a bit more of a harsh dictator uh, and you would shut protest down.